start pushing our way to, actually, here's a group coming already. Right See them right there at 10 o'clock? Go ahead and put a shot out there about 60 feet. Drop it on the next one. Pick it up one more. Go 10 feet right. Perfect. Strip, strip. There he is. They show him, baby. Good job, Blair. <laughs> Woo! Come on, baby. Good job, buddy. Look at that jump. Yeah, Over man. Over you. <laughs> nice. That's what you gotta love in the Florida Keys, baby. Get to the spot and cast <laughs> and hook a tarpon. You see him demolish that fly? He come up and sucked it down like it was going out of style. We're ready. Here it comes again. Oh. Nice jump. That's the way they're supposed to eat it, right? Yep. <laughs> well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. We're off the Florida Keys right now, fishing in about oh, three feet of water. Got the beaver tail out today. And uh, we're catching tarpon in Key West. Oh, come on. I get a good jump here. Come on, baby. Anyway, let me get back to it. We're fishing with Captain Jared Shear today. He's running left, he's running left. Woo. Now that the fish has finally turned the right way, let me tell you who we're with. We're fishing today with Captain Jared Sear out of Key West. And uh, the main target today we got on the other end of the line right now. Everybody's been asking for fly shows, so here you go. Brought the buggy whip out today. It's funny, when all the conditions get right, this wind lays down, temperature warms up, these fish just go off. That was neat. We got some spot here, the first one that rolled. The very first one that rolled, tossed to it, and then come up and saw that bucket open up and sucked that fly right down. We haven't had a skinny running boat for a long time, so we haven't really been fly fishing or fishing the flats much. But it feels good to be back out here now, brother. These beaver tails are perfect for what we're doing. Quiet, shallow pulling skiffs. Doing the Mark Sosen technique. <laughs> Down and dirty. Down and dirty. You see what I'm doing here with a fly rod? When he runs to the left, I'm kind of pulling him to the right, and you can put your fly line in the water like this to give him just a little bit more drag. The only bad thing about that, if you're using a little bit of light tippet, have tendency to break them off. And I hate breaking off fish. Oh, nice jump. Coming at you, coming at you. Keep whining. Good job, Blair. Pretty fish. Uh-oh, not. Uh-oh, things just got interesting. <laughs> things just got funny, the knot, you see what happened there? The knot uh, got up in the line. I'm using a real long leader. We're gonna try to do. Yep, what I'll do is I'm gonna hop down there. Lay down on the deck. I can't help you out. Nice and gentle here. Still pretty green. This a fly <laughs> rod's awful short, man. <laughs> Oh, the situations you get into fishing. Uh-oh, go. Don't break my rod. <laughs> Don't break my rod. <laughs> oh, it's even a fun fight on a short stick. <laughs> Funny about this stuff is it goes from hours of boredom to minutes of chaos. <laughs> That's a neat sound with that line. Rod going oh, the look nice. We got leaders, caught fish. Go grab it. Oh, oh. he's done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jared. Good job, buddy. That was awesome. How glad it floats. Yeah. <laughs> God, this boat is quiet, isn't it? Boat is dead silent. Quiet. Rides good. Super dry. You know it's quiet when you can hear the camera boat slapping 30 yards away. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a group coming there, Blair. Coming at 11 o'clock there, you see him coming? Yep, you're right on him. I got him. About 100 feet out right now, hold on. All right, go ahead and start your shot. One more and then drop it. Perfect. Trip. Easy, easy. Tripping. He's tripping. He's looking at it there. He's looking at it. Oh, come on, come on, get it, get the strip, 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 strip. There he right is. Right there by the boat, buddy. Oh my god, look at that heat. <laughs> wow. wow, that is incredible. 
Come on, baby, go. That is awesome, Blair. Ah, oh, quit shaking that head. You still got him, you still got him. Keep it low. There he goes. Come on, clear that line. Wow. Good on job. The line, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's have cooler what? Wow. I'm, Ooh. I'm shaking so bad right now. <laughs> He ate that thing 10 feet from the boat. I had the leader, I had the leader in the eyes. <laughs> Literally had the leader in the eyes when he ate. Oh, gotta love the Marquesas. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm so shaking so bad right now, I can hardly move. I didn't breathe for, for 30 seconds. <laughs> He's tracking it. He's tracking it. There ain't nothing like the feeling of catching a fish on a fly rod like this. Oh. So you get some more air there. I think that was probably one of the coolest eats I've had all year. <laughs> that was probably one of the coolest eats I've ever had. Makes that buck 80 we got on fly, but. Nothing like stocking them in a beaver tail. Woo! Dude, I don't think, this boat is so quiet. It's the quietest boat I've ever been in and being pulled around on or pulled. Unbelievable. We're in a six to eight inch chop right now. And this thing is absolutely dead silent. That's why that fish ate two feet from the boat. Unbelievable. I can't believe that fish ate that close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, folks. <laughs> A little bit of excitement right there. We're gonna try to keep everything in one piece this time. Now, what we've done now, we've traveled, I guess I can say it, can I? Yep. We've traveled all the way out to the Marquesas now, and uh, the fish are here. The fish are here. What's the best time of year? I know right now is the we're talking about the worm hatch and stuff going on. But what's your best time, you think? I would say, you know, anytime between uh, April and June, you know, is when our peak migration is. But, you know, if we get the right weather windows, they can show up in February and March. And, you know, we fish resident fish all the way into August and September. That's when it's really nice and cool down here, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the beauty of that time of year is not a whole lot of people around. So we got the choice of all our spots and doing what we want. Come on, dude. So Jared, how long you been guiding down here now? Uh, this is my ninth year. Ninth I'm born year. and raised down here. Born and raised, a, a true conk. And him and if y'all remember, Chris Trossett last year on the show. They grew up, went to high school together, grade school together. Oh yeah. I couldn't imagine growing up down here, man. Kids rode bicycles, we took boats. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably one of the toughest tarpon I've ever fought. You ever had them where they just don't give up? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Ever. Sometimes you get some of those breeding females, man, and they just... That's what this one's got to be. fight and fight and fight. This is one of the toughest fish I've ever fought my... Oh! oh. Right there. Well, we had him in a leader twice. Yep. Especially when he ate that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to re-rig and... Uh, Woo, see if we can feed another one some hey, chicken man. feathers, brother. Good job, buddy. That was awesome. Well, welcome back, folks. We're still at the Marquesas here. We got Captain Jared working his tail off for us, and we are looking for them Silver Kings again. So y'all stick close to the TV and see what happens, or if you're watching it on the YouTube channel. Don't leave your computer. I've heard a lot of different stories about the Marquesas here, but what, uh, what do you, what's your theory of how they were formed? You know, I'm not 100% positive. I've heard all kinds of old wives' tales. It's everything from volcanic to meteors. You know, I don't really know. All I know is it does make an unbelievable place to fish. It is absolutely beautiful. And if y'all come down here fishing, make sure you bring your Coastas because it absolutely, it's like somebody turns the lights on out here. All right, Blair, here's a group of fish out here at 11 o'clock. You see them coming? Yeah, I got them. All right, go ahead. 60 feet. All right, drop it on the next one. All right, slow strip. Slow. Nice and easy, real slow. Pick it back up. Uh, they're still coming. Put one out here at these fish that haven't seen us yet. Pick it back up out here. 10 more feet on it next time. Drop it. There you go. Get into them. There you go. Strip it. Nice and easy. There he is. Oh, he, he swiped out of miss. Keep stripping. There he is. He ate it. Got him. Good job, Bob. <laughs> nice. 
Oh, keep stripping. Come on, baby. Come on, run. 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 Oh. Run, boy, run. You're hooked, run. Jump. <laughs> All right, he listened to me on that one. <laughs> Good job, Blair. On the reel, baby. On the reel. Oh, and he just came oh. off. Hey. That was a good one, though. <laughs> good no, he didn't. Oh, he, he just turned. There. He's just running at you. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> that was a little burn. <laughs> good job, Blair. God, I thought that fish came off. I got to say, this is the quickest back to back to back to back I've hooked tarpon. <laughs> Welcome to the Florida Keys. Gotta love it. Look at, look at the whole school right here. Look at this big ass, big, big school of fish right here by the boat. What, was it, what kind of school is that? <laughs> <laughs> a big one. That's insane. I want to stay with a school, but something big and blue is pulling on me. Blair, you are on fire today, my man. Uh, it's only been. Holy <laughs> jump. <laughs> it's only been, I don't know, five years since I caught a tarpon on fly <laughs> with Captain Hansen Lau. Nice. That was fun. Hansen's a good fisherman. Oh, this one's a little bit more. Yeah, I was going to say, this one's uh, been a little more forgiving than our last. <laughs> so how big do you think this one is, Jerry? Uh, the fish looks like probably 60 pounds, something like that. Perfect size. They like to jump. Yeah. Shoot around the boat. Well, this one feels like he's about 120 yeah. right now. I might have to have you get up here and catch one. <laughs> now, don't twist my arm. <laughs> He's a tough one, Mr. Grinch. She's up in that shallow water oh, now. And all that oxygen, I think I'm gonna be on this fish a little bit. Yep. <laughs> well, Y'all stay tuned, we're gonna be right back with Captain Jared Sear and a big old tarpon from the Marquesas and the Keys. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what Captain Jared and I were out there using. We broke out the 10 weight buggy whip. It's the flats blue. I think it had a lot to do with one of the hookups that we had with the fish that ate. I think I had that much line sticking out of the tip of my rod when he ate the fly. And speaking of the fly, it's just a, a simple fly. It's made out of uh, fox fur and rabbit fur, and I can't believe Jared's let me show it to you, but uh, a lot of times they're top secret with their flies down there. Definitely getting the job done. It was imitating what they call the worm hatch that goes on down there this time of year. And what the worm hatch is, it's the little worms that come out of the coral reefs down there and the tarpon just go nuts over them. A lot of fish eat them out there. But uh, broke the beaver tail out for the first time, got the job done nice and quiet. The most silent boat I've ever been in in my life, pulling after fish in a, in a nice big chop like that. You could hear the camera boat 30, 40 yards away from us and that was getting a little bit annoying. So you can imagine if you had a, a slappy boat, that you know, you're gonna scare the fish away, uh, plain and simple. That's why we were able to do so many hookups. Best tarpon day I've ever had. If y'all ever get down to the Keys, make sure you look up Captain Jared Sear. He is one of the top guides down there and will do everything he can to put you on your first tarpon on fly, second, whatever. I wanna say a special thanks to the Starbright crew for the whole week down there in the Keys. Beautiful place, you gotta get down there. Remember one thing though, every fishing season starts at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Wow, what a pretty fish. Look, he's wearing that merkin like a mustache. <laughs> That's not where you wear a merkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Two rod lengths away. Oh, you gotta love that. We're shiner fishing today on uh, the Marquesas Flats. <laughs> Great big shiner. Hey, imagine if there was bass big enough to eat these shiners. <laughs> they are, they're called bull sharks, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy, I'm gonna hop down and see if I can't come get a leader there. All right. You want me to put the talon down? Yeah, put the talon down. Talon down. <sighs> Sometimes what you want to do is try to keep that line right over their back if they're going away from you. And at this point of the game, this is where a lot of them are lost, just like we lost that last one right by the boat. The most critical part of the fish fight, people think the hookup is, but now that that hook's been in there wearing out, wearing out, wearing out, and... Light leaders. Right coming under you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Backwards. Oh, come here, girl. No, you're not grabbing my lip. Good 
It is a caught fish now, brother. It Not, is. Nothing brown around. Come on down. Oh, come on. That fly out. Yeah. Popped out nice and easy. Come here, baby. What a beautiful fish. Slide down this way a little bit. There we go. Woo, what a fish. Pretty thank girl. you, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Been a while. Oh, man. You want to get the trolling motor going or just yeah. send her just, off? Yeah, hey, let's uh, pick up that talon and then we'll uh, pull her a little bit. There we go. Oh, it smells like tarpon, baby! Now, what we're doing now, folks, is we're getting water to go through that fish's mouth, through the gills, and what that'll do is bring it back to life good so we can release it. You don't want to go too fast, just a nice little steady flow. After a fish battle like that, you know, I'm wore out, but that little fish right there, just like us, we get lactic acid buildup, they'll get lactic acid buildup and they'll cramp. And a lot of times if you don't revive them right, the sharks are around and they'll come and get them and you don't want that to happen. She's getting her color back now. Yeah, she's looking good, kicking her tail. There she goes. There she goes, baby. Awesome. Brother, <laughs> Good that, job. Was, that was awesome. If y'all ever get a chance to do this, make sure you look up Captain Jerry here. What's your website? Greyghostfishing at gmail.com. Greyghostfishing at gmail.com. You come out here to the Marquesas, and I swear it was back to back to back. Every time we lost a fish, came back, and it was boom. It doesn't happen that way all the time, trust me. But uh, if you come with him, you got a good chance of it happening. Don't forget about the website, addictafishing.com. And also don't forget, hashtag show your Mogan on Instagram. We got the new Mogan lounge up, uh, a bunch of new stuff going on at Addictive Fishing. So go to addictafishing.com and check us out. And we'll see you next week. Oh, want to say special thanks to the Starbright crew. We're going to be doing some offshore stuff here a little bit later in the week, but they're putting us up all week. So thanks, Pete. Thanks, Greg. Awesome place to stay. We'll see you here tonight. Love it. That was awesome. See ya. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. See this? I lost my two fingers to the man-eating tarpon. <laughs> the flies usually don't chase them, do they? Actually, 11 o'clock now. I'm sorry. Nice transition. There he right is. there by the boat, buddy. Oh my God, look at that heat. <laughs> wow. That is incredible.